your life. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Warren City School District Board of Education meeting. Today is Tuesday, July 20th, 2021. The time is... Can't even see. Hold on. I'm sorry. 6.05 p.m. We are live streaming um, through warrencityschools.org and uh, with the help of WSCN. This meeting is a meeting of the Warren City Board of Education in public for the purpose of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is a time for public participating via email during the meeting as indicated in agenda item number 11. At this time, I'll call the meeting to order and if everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Could you please call the roll? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Here. Mrs. Patterson? Here. Mrs. Shannon? Here. Mr. Walker? Here. Mrs. Lamparis? Here. Everyone is present and accounted for. We have no need for number uh, three on the agenda, which is an executive session, so we'll move to number four, which is communications. Mr. Shiro, please. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Lamparis. I have a number of communications this evening, all of which will be um, brief in nature. First, I wanted to uh, uh, advise the board and the community that we have received uh, our grant for preschool allocation, as you're well aware, our goal is to serve about 320 preschoolers um, free of charge, age three and four across the district at all five buildings. And this year's award will fund 209 uh, spots at a cost of $836,000 um, through the Ohio Department of Education. Again, that's about half of the cost for this program. Um, I wanna thank the board um, for their investment in our students and our community for the rest of that balance. In regards to preschool, we are still going to keep our model that we had last year. We put four units over at Willard uh, because uh, we were ma making Willard more of a pre-K experience and we had the classrooms that were most conducive to preschool learning. We're still keeping one preschool classroom here. Um, we kept the other classroom open for uh, COVID folding room uh, and we made some other adjustments across the district. So we do have um, one to two units at other buildings. I believe there's still two at Jefferson, one at McGuffey and one at Lincoln. Uh, so we still have our total of 10. We also enrollment wise have 289 preschool students that are registered. I can find my enrollment information at this time in 90 on a wait list. So we are very confident that we will have our 320 spots, which is our target. If we could accommodate more students, if we can get additional ECE funding um, for the students, um, we will do that as well. Uh, we have to make sure we have the staffing, the funding, and everything in place. Our goal is, again, to start educating our students developmentally appropriate at ages three and four years of age. Very successful program, and we're very proud of our work there. Also today, Mr. Fowley spotted me um, in the district truck. Um, I must have been exceeding the speed limit, I would suggest, because he wanted to know um, what building I was rushing to. Um, if you know me, um, it was I was going to Sam's Club because they donated 28,800 children's masks um, should we need them for the next year at no charge and 160 full face mask shields. I was told um, that if I wanted them, I needed to get there and I <laughs> got there in 12 minutes. So we received a substantial donation. If you know how I am, no further conversation needed. Thank you to Nile Sam's Club and that information will be on a future agenda. Um, as an update, we, as a district, the board approved just under $1 million um, in the LED lighting retrofit across the district. As of um, 7-16, uh, July 16th, 68% of the project is completed. That would be 80% at the high school, Lincoln, Jefferson, McGuffey at 86%. Willard has not started. We have Willard waiting until we get the roof um, going. With speaking of the Willard roof, um, we were told about five or seven work days ago, 10 work days ago, we needed 20 more work days. Um, if you wanted to count those, that really started this week because it rained for a week and a half. Yeah. So we're 20 days, um, 20 work days away from completing the multi-million uh, dollar Willard Roof project. <laughs> so we'll be glad um, when that is completed. 
Um, two other brief updates as communications. Um, I know we're going to talk a little bit later in the agenda regarding health orders and guidance, student masking. Um, you know, there's been a lot that has come out from the CDC, from our governor, from the uh, American Association of Pediatrics. But the most important thing hasn't come out yet. Um, John May from the city of Warren and I are in constant communication. And on Monday, he had emailed me that per his call with ODH in the morning, ODH is very close to completing a draft for the Ohio Department of Education and local health departments concerning school restart and their requirements. So basically, I have nothing to share with you this evening <laughs> in regarding the topic we're going to be discussing. Um, again, we're prepared in any way, in any direction. Um, board policy states that you have given the authority of the superintendent to um, respond accordingly to local health conditions. Um, John May and I will be completely on the same page, whichever way we move forward. Um, but I know we'll be talking about that uh, a little bit later. And lastly, when I ran enrollment statistics today, today was actually the first day we have any kind of enrollment statistics. We are steady across all grade levels at level. If we move our kindergarten registrations to what our traditional data shows us and our preschool to what our traditional data shows us, it brings us to the level we would be at in November of 2019. And you're probably wondering why I would pick November, because you're inflated in August, then you lose students when they go to other schools, you inflate in early September when they come back to your district, then you deflate when you find others who have moved out of the area, out of state, et cetera. November really gives us a true toll of where our numbers are. We are within six students, predictably, and projecting of where we would be two years ago this upcoming uh, no, uh, November, which I think is a very stable place for us to be mm -hmm. student-wise in the district. Um, I think that actually has the potential to go up, given kindergartners that parents kept home during the pandemic. And we are seeing steady, steady, steady registration of students. Preschool registration is way up in interest. So um, those are all positive signs for the work that we're doing here in the Warren City Schools. So that concludes my communications uh, this evening, unless there's any questions. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, just a comment. I, I just want to thank the superintendent for listening so carefully to several of our maintenance employees concerning the Willard Roof. Absolutely. So we should be ready to go then when school starts. Yeah, well, we're going to be ready to go okay. even if they're still working on the roof. We just want that project tied up with a bow and done. Right, yeah. Um, but but we, were, we have been able to the function right now when I was there, it seems like the whole 6-8 roof is off in, 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 in some way or another. I see some areas of plywood, some sheet metal, John, all that's correct. Um, so that is kind of the last academic phase of the building. And so mm -hmm. I think... You know, they should wrap that up and move on to anything they haven't um, touched. And in, and in fact, that hallway on that side of the building is the least occupied of the building. That's where we actually have empty rooms and space and we spread out just because of the building under utilization. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Be able to begin the LED project right afterwards? Yes. Okay. Yes, that LED project at Willard should probably start in the next week or so. And I could say one of our buildings um, went from... Uh, very low percent to 80 percent since Friday um, so once they start moving in, in, in this project they can knock through a building Willard size in days not weeks Excellent. Sure. thank you very much thank you all right we'll move on to agenda item number five which is the adoption of the agenda do I have a motion so moved. second call the roll please mr. Walker yes mr. Fowley yes mrs. Shannon Yes. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mrs. Limperos? Yes. The motion carries and the agenda is adopted. Um, agenda item number six, the treasurer's report. Mrs. Cortino? Um, as you know, we uh, closed out our fiscal year 2021 as of June 30th. Just wanted to point out um, uh, some positives. Our general fund balance increased by $7.6 million. Uh, so we also have... Um, 9.1 million in our capital improvement fund and on your agenda tonight is a proposal to transfer another million dollars into that fund um, in addition with our um, bond refunding and issuance we are carrying approximately 2.5 million in the locally funded initiatives that were 
approved back when we did the um, OSFC project. So um, we have a healthy balance. We are currently, um, as of August 2000, our August 24th, I believe, our, our submission for our ESSER three um, funding budget is due. Um, finishing touches on that, and um, that is 30 million that's coming our way uh, to um, duel out for um, initiatives to, you know, um, close the learning gap that occurred and any other impacts that we have from the pandemic. Also on the agenda tonight is um, a contract to for new boilers for our buildings. Um, that is going to be able to be funded uh, under our ESSER dollars due to um, HVAC upgrades. Mm -hmm. So um, excited to have that opportunity to you know, provide those repairs that our buildings are in need of due to getting to that age. Mm -hmm. um, so in, a, in addition, I wanted to mention, um, I am currently taking um, like uh, sessions with the Ohio Associated School Business Officials. There are uh, four working sessions on the new state funding model, um, just going over in depth. So I know we had talked about um, scheduling a financial advisory committee. Mm -hmm. um, that, that session, those sessions wrap up mid-August. So I, I would like to go through that just so that, you know, I feel comfortable with communicating out to the, the community, all the changes, all the impacts that it has to Warren City Schools. So I will be sending out a notification to meet with Financial Advisory Committee at the end of August. Okay. Okay? Um, Thank other you. Other than that, um, we, are, we closed out so quickly that the auditors called already and they're beginning our um, audit for fiscal 21. So, so that's a good thing. I'd like to just make a brief comment in regards to the boilers. Um, you know, folks may look and think we have new schools and this boiler replacement is premature. The reality is we have already replaced the boilers at Jefferson and McGuffey mm -hmm. due to essential need. Correct, John? Um, mm -hmm. As well as at the Board of Education office. Um, and when we did transition to the Board of Education office, the gas company called to wonder what we were doing that our gas reading was so low because of the efficiency upgrade. And they want to know what we had done, and it was simply an upgrade. So from when the schools are designed, from the time they're bid, from the time they're built, and by the time you put a boiler system in, it's already outdated. Mm -hmm. And so we have, we are finishing the boiler placement project. We probably, um, you know, it, it's, been, it's been something that has been ongoing. And those schools um, have already, the two newest schools needed replaced first. Um, so OSFC, that's how, how it rolls. So there is, there is an absolute need for the boiler replacement. Everybody okay? All right, thank you very much. Uh, agenda item number seven, superintendent's report, Mr. Shiro. All right, thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to turn the floor over to um, Bill Nicholson, athletic director uh, for the Warren City School District for a wonderful opportunity to recognize uh, our state tennis tournament participant, Mr. Paopoulos. Mr. Nicholson. I'm going to go up here, Steve. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good to see you tonight. Um, here to recognize this young man tonight for his accomplishments that he uh, had in the spring. Um, I want to first start off by saying outstanding student athlete. True meaning of a student athlete. WSCN member. See him at the games broadcasting, doing a wide variety of things. Fantastic golfer. Two-time state qualifier for the tennis tournament. A couple years ago, him and his brother teamed up in doubles and went all the way to the state. Awesome job. Um, <clears throat> recently, uh, Anthony started off in sectionals at Solon. He qualified uh, through the elements. I think we were all bundled up in snow caps and <laughs> turtlenecks. So we went from Solon and the dis sectionals to the districts in Akron. We go to Akron, it's 190 degrees out. <laughs> Mom and me are sitting underneath the shade tree with umbrellas. And so we get to, we qualify out of 
Akron in the districts to the state tournament. What an accomplishment. We're now in Mason, Ohio. Mason, Ohio, down in the Cincinnati area. Kings Island's right there. Uh, we could have built an arc that weekend. <laughs> so this guy competed in all kinds of elements, indoor courts, outdoor courts, and he kept persevering. And I'm just, it's a joy to watch this young man play. He's very talented. He represents our district well. Um, he's got one more year to go. I think he saw this year playing singles down in Mason what it takes in order to get to that top prize, which I think he has the ability to do. And I'm sure he's been playing in a lot of tournament competitions throughout the summer, getting better and better. And uh, I'm looking forward to going down to Mason again next year. So keep doing what you're doing. His mother and father are here tonight. Thank you for everything you're doing with this young man. Um, his game is getting better and better each year. So keep up the good work. So at this time, I'd like to present this award from the Warren City Schools Board of Education to Mr. Anthony Payopoulos. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. <laughs> you want to speak, speak or anything? No, sure. Oh, stuff that. <laughs> um, so first off, um, I want to thank Coach Sharnas, um, Mr. Nicholson, uh, the Warren City family uh, means a lot to know that I have the support that I need. Um, and lastly, uh, Mr. Sharo for the new courts. Um, really appreciate that. And the board, also the board. <laughs> of course the board. Um, You're welcome. Yeah. That means a lot to uh, not only me, but my teammates. We, we really enjoyed that and looking forward to next year. Great job. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you, Anthony, for a job well done. I'm going to skip the order of the superintendent's reports at this time, and I'm going to turn the floor over to Mr. Lacey, uh, Executive Director of Business Operations for the Districts, for a student recognition from our United Fresh Start Voucher Program. Uh, good evening. Uh, uh, back in the uh, midst of COVID, an uh, organization here that Christian represents had this great idea uh, to do a, uh, they got a grant for our kids where if they took a voucher, we give them a voucher, and if they took it to a local neighborhood store and they got a healthy snack, we would put their name in for a drawing where each of them would have a chance to win a gift card. So we, got, we hurriedly got the vouchers out to the schools just in time before we had to close the schools, if I remember correctly, um, back in, uh, when was that, November-ish? And uh, so uh, we just got the results in, and we have our uh, two lucky winners with us. And I want to introduce uh, Christian from uh, Trumbull Neighborhood Partnership uh, to recognize our kids. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you for having me here, too, at the board meeting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lacey. Um, I would like to award um, a $250 gift card um, the student can use this at any um, Eastwood Mall stores within the Eastwood Mall complex to Emma. If she wants to come up, she can accept her gift card. Okay. Here you go. You're welcome. Congratulations. <laughs> and then, oh yeah. <laughs> And then the second gift card is to uh, Jeremiah Hicks. Wow. Here you go. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and um, yeah, that, that's about it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and uh, folks, they both said that they would buy dinner tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much, Mr. Lacey. And I just want to comment that you know this this is a continuation of some great projects that we're trying to get done at the grassroots, where we are trying to promote uh, healthier lifestyles with our students. If it's a fresh fruits and vegetables grant we have in our elementary schools, or it's this partnership with TMP, any time that we could promote a healthier lifestyle, um, we, we are going to do so. And just to just to put a little tease out there, you know, uh, just as part of Mr. Caper's new position in the district regarding student wellness, there's going to be a lot more things to come um, over the next several years. We've already been talking and strategizing um, on those. Uh, so. Uh, Hopefully the time we've all been waiting for was the student recognition, but if it's not for the Board of Education members, um, Wendy Hartzell, our Chief Academic Officer, and Regina Toich, our Executive Director of Curriculum Instruction, is going to review our academic crosswalk um, that we have put together um, for those who have not, who may be new to the Board or new to this experience. Um, when we were going through state reviews a few years ago, it was a lot of information coming from the state and we put together an academic crosswalk in order for us to organize our body of work. This document has grown by leaps and bounds and this document is now what the state is recommending for schools across the state of Ohio to use. The state is now using Warren's crosswalk to organize the work that we do. So without any further anticipation, I would turn it over to um, Wendy and Regina for updates. Thank you. Oh, good evening, board members. Uh, as Mr. Uh, Shiro alluded to, you know, this has been a work in progress. Uh, what you have in front of you is our most updated crosswalk. Um, notice that it starts in, uh, you know, 2019-20, but all of the years preceding that, just due to space, uh, we do have those documents and the work that was done that led up to today. Um, but it just, otherwise you wouldn't be able to read it. It'd be like in a size four font. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we are not going to go page by page, but I did want you to see the document in its entirety mm -hmm. because it's a very fluid document. Mm -hmm. um, but for those of you that are new board members, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a history of how the document came to be, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, spring of 2016, Warren City Schools um, had a review from ODE. And when they came in and reviewed a lot of documentation, a lot of data, um, they had made some recommendations. And upon those recommendations and the feedback that we received, fall of 2016, the crosswalk was developed. Because what they had made recommendations on, we as a district then reviewed what is in place, what we are currently doing, and then what we did is we prioritized based on the district, what their, their recommendation and what our needs were. And so as a district, we prioritized, and here is the crosswalk. And this, this took a, a big team effort. We had a lot of people involved in this. And it is a fluid document. So what you see here is just the beginning. We'll be updating this as the year goes through because as we continue to shift and make changes or updates, it's because those are the needs of the district and the children before us. So even though this is an academic crosswalk, and I know you're excited for this, <laughs> believe it or not, we have a SEL crosswalk that was born out of this also. That won't be tonight. <laughs> Stay tuned. Mr. Capers, I'm sure, will be presenting that at some point this year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, even though this is the academic crosswalk, though, if you notice in the very first part of it, and, and we're not going to allude to step-by-step -step with pages, but... There are external partners. That was the very first part. And I think what's very important to understand is though, even though those are external partners mm -hmm. and they are not directly affiliated with you know, the academics of children, if you look through that list, m most of that is with the safety, mental, um, social, emotional learning and well-being of children. And everything impacts a child, in turn impacts their academics. So I just wanted to point out that this, you know, the partnerships that we have, we are very grateful for, and we've got great community support and, and businesses that partner with us because they want to see the great things happening for our kids. Yes, ma'am? External partners, the ones that are They were newly added after the original uh, crosswalk started. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. So even though this plan, as previously mentioned, um, 
is a work in progress. One of the things that's in the plan was working through the Ohio improvement process. Mm -hmm. And what we do as part of the Ohio improvement process, we are still in full um, following that. It is the district leadership team, it's the building leadership teams, it's teacher-based teams. And through those entities, there's a communication chain that goes both up and down from the building level to the district and back, as well as to the teachers to look at data and make recommendations and shifts so that we're consistently looking at how to move students forward. As we continue to use the collaborative hiring process, I think Mr. Shiro, either at the last uh, board meeting or the one before, he had talked about that we had started looking at uh, teaching candidates March, April. Mm -hmm. uh, we have hired 23 teachers to date. And in, in that process, you know, there's been a lot more interviews than to 23, but we are being very selective to make sure that we are uh, bringing on people that one, know that the work that's before them, and two, that are going to roll up their sleeves and work really hard to propel our kids forward. So one of the things that came up um, was the use of a benchmark assessment system. Mm -hmm. And at the time that came up, the timing was very good. As a school district, we were exploring that option, having a consistent system across all the K-8s and up into the high school. And we adopted the following year. We've been about five years into NWA MAP. And to ensure that we're not over-assessing students, because we know there are lots of requirements, our benchmark assessment system meets uh, third grade guarantee. It meets what we can do for the diagnostics. It meets for OTES 1.0 and now 2.0 for high quality student data. So it checked a lot of boxes and it, even with that, it gave us very good data. It tells us what we need to do. So we've been excited to just really keep continuing to dig into that. High school in the meantime also brought in PSAT because MAP also gives a projection to um, career and college readiness, and PSAT is that next link. So um, our future steps, even prior to COVID, have been about now finding those common formative pieces across the four PK-8s. Again, we have four schools that funnel into our high school, so we need to make sure of a level of consistency, and we get a lot of teacher voice and administrator input on those things. Um, as you keep going there, besides the assessments, they talked about professional development. We are fortunate, again, this is not something that um, was new when we came in here. There was always the six-hour uh, professional development. There mm -hmm. is commitment to waiver days and also the time in the morning. So we are fortunate to have that. It's just important that, again, it's strategic and it lines to the plan because then that's how we, how we know things get done. Um, part of uh, the PD is also over one of the things they talked about, our adopted curriculum. So right away we walked into mathematics. We've uh, done some pieces with literacy at the primary as well as literacy in 612, and we're working on science. Well, we were working on it, then COVID, and we're going back to revisit it because we know that's necessary. And then they'll put all major contents on a cycle. So one other thing, um, there, there's a buzzword out there, it's called MTSS. It means multi-tiered systems of support. Mm -hmm. And really what that does, is that takes both the academic side of a child as well as the affective side. Um, just the social, emotional, the behavioral, just meeting all of those other um, tangible and sometimes intangible needs of students outside of the academic realm. And what that does is you, it, it almost looks like a triangle if you've seen that triangle that's broken into three tiers. Mm -hmm. And so all students get everything mm -hmm. and then when we see that there's, there might be some students that need just a little bit more. So they get everything as everybody plus something else. And then there are some students that that's just not enough. So they get just a little bit more. It's very prescriptive. And so in both of those affective and the academic ways, we are um, more clearly defining and developing our MTSS system to better meet the needs of our students. And that is done through input from building level and also being able to work in with the Department of CNI, special education, uh, student success and outreach, because um, what we have to do is we have to build those layers so that whatever that need is, we have an avenue in order to meet it. 
So one of the things that was on the original document was getting uh, teachers and administrators to really understand professional development. Again, as you know, that's a growth process. We often use the term, we can be data rich and information poor. Um, so it's important it takes time. And then obviously things were changing. Standards were changing, testing was changing. So there is a lot to learn, but um, we've made that commitment. We make sure that we're giving ample time for people to understand, understanding that it also sometimes isn't learned in a 30 minute PD. It could take, you know, a length of time to get to understand that. To help support that, um, within the Office of Curriculum Instruction, three people are regional data leads. That's typically something that would be at an ESC or an SST, but again, as a school district, committing to sending us to uh, the training because we can then take care of ourselves in-house, and that's very important. So it gives the um, right amount of attention. And then one of the things that they talked about as you're moving into kind of the capital improvements world was technology. Well, obviously technology took on a different lens when it was no longer the infrastructure. We obviously have built those pieces, but we were always giving tech PD, but certainly not to the degree that happened in March of 2020 <laughs> and then last year. And I really do need to say, there's nowhere it says it on there, but a real shout out to the people that gave the professional development and the teachers, the recipients. Mm -hmm. They took it, they ran with it, they often became our, our teachers, teaching us back and making it very cyclical. We learned a lot about asynchronous and synchronous learning and how to really reach children. Um, so it was just a time where staff stepped up and led and did a fantastic job. Sorry turn the notes oh okay teacher evaluation system <laughs> that was on there uh, again um, we have a system in place we're not we're not worried about the system um, mm -hmm. we are in OTES 1.0 we are converting to 2.0 that is required by law mm -hmm. um, the thing that I can say that I see in this school district is the commitment to calibrate we have multiple administrators and to ensure that we are implementing this process fairly, consistently, and in a manner it was intended to be across the school district is committed every year um, by Mr. Shiro, Mrs. Hartzell, and the administrators as they take part in sometimes the PD that they're watching one more video and they script and they take care of those things. So um, the next layer to that is ensuring the teachers understand. And there'll be a commitment again this school year to making sure that teachers are aware of the new changes to the evaluation system because you don't want it done to them. They need to be part of the process. So again, those things that we have worked hard to make sure that that's happening, that it's collaborative. So the last part, uh, which I didn't put a lot of detail into, was on capital improvements. And when, when you think of capital improvements, you think of money, you think of probably structures and things like that. But because this is the academic, I just want to kind of tie it all back together. When we talk about infrastructure, when we talk about buying devices for students, when we talk about hotspots, when we talk about making sure that meals are accessible to students, when, you know, all of those things, that's all part of capital improvement. That's where that, you know, money lies and, and where that focus is. But without those things, our children can't be successful. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to kind of tie that back together because I think a lot of times when people think academics, it's just curriculum. But all of those other things to support that whole child mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. to be in place in order for the children to be able to access that curriculum. Mm -hmm. So appreciate your time tonight. Are there any questions? Does anyone have any questions? Don't look overwhelmed. <laughs> It's, it's a lot. <laughs> Any questions to my right? Not right now. No? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we look forward to our next one. And that concludes the superintendent's report for this evening. Thank you. Thanks. And with that, we'll move on to the Board of Education Committee reports, uh, agenda item number eight. And uh, first up is athletics, Mr. Nicholson. So 
Okay, as most of you are aware, we're getting ready for the upcoming fall season. <clears throat> Lots of things going on. Kids are practicing hard, getting all the forms completed and everything. So uh, the campus has been full of life here recently. Um, one of the things that we discussed in our uh, recent Athletic Council meeting, uh, we're going to honor the 1971 State Warren G. Harding Panthers football team. Mm -hmm. uh, we've uh, met with two individuals that graduated in the class of 72. And um, we, we didn't get a lot of feedback from uh, some of the class members. So Brandon Giovanni put together a Facebook page and has uh, got a lot of people to sign up. So we're out there looking for anyone that was part of that 71 team. If you know them, please refer them to me or uh, go to uh, the Facebook 1971 Warren G. Harding Panther website. And uh, there's a form that they can fill in all their information, their contact information. So uh, we will be honoring them week four against Maslin. That's September 10th. Uh, we'll be wearing the throwback uni uniforms, and it'll be a great evening. Um, health update. Once what Mr. Shire was saying uh, earlier, we really have no idea what's going on with the health department. So the athletic department is planning on everybody's returning. Concession cells are going to be there, blah, 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 blah. But if it doesn't, once again, we have a plan. We will be flexible. We have contingency plans. So, you know, I'm meeting with our uh, concession boosters, uh, presidents Thursday to go over, you know, items that will be sold, pricing, things of that nature. Uh, we usually do that in late May, but we put it off because I'm still not sure what we're doing. So we're going to have that meeting on Thursday. Uh, also, you know, those of you that are season ticket uh, holders, uh, we, we get calls from them individuals and uh, we're getting ready to get started because uh, we're to the point where we're approaching four and a half weeks and, you know, we're, we're going to get that, that information. We've got information out to them and now it's a matter of uh, issuing the tickets because we still, you know, are we allowed to sit beside each other? Do we got to go every one? Mm -hmm. So uh, those are some of the challenges that we have faced recently. Um, Warren G. Harding summer pool usage uh, update. We went over this in the athletic council meeting last week. The Warren G. Harding swimming pool has been utilized a lot this summer. It's been exceptional, I think, compared to past summers. We have Inspiring Minds in there. We have the Red Cross. We have the Smiles program, Learn to Swim program. So great job with the pool util utilization this summer. Um, lots of kids in there, happy kids, happy adults. I've seen community members, uh, people from Trumbull County attending the Red Cross program. So very successful summer pool program. And one more item, I'm going to refer uh, to Mr. Shiro. Yeah, just wanted to share with the uh, members of the Athletic Council <clears throat> and the Board of Education that um, Mr. Lacey and I are going to be meeting with the Warren Western Reserve um, folks uh, this week uh, regarding uh, the multi-year back, eight or nine years back when uh, the Reserve um, graduates approached the Board of Education mm -hmm. and former superintendent about putting some sort of monument park over here at Warren G. Harding High School. Uh, we're going Mr. Lacey and I are going to meet with them. And uh, again, from that point, if they, you know, wish to present a little further, I'm going to direct it towards athletic council as a board committee okay. uh, to go through that. Uh, just as I'm sure the Paul Warfield uh, project, again, I wasn't, I wasn't in this position at that point, but I'm sure there was a formal process for that to go through. Um, so I will be directing, uh, without any objections, uh, towards Athletic Council, those conversations for follow-up. Yeah, I think uh, that's that's what they did with the, uh, the Warfield yeah, project. Yeah, I mean, that's, so it, that's it, it seems like the process Anything that we that have followed. Anything that has to do with athletics, yeah. Yeah, so it seems like the process we followed and seems logical. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to follow up that that uh, meeting is going to be taking place. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for arranging uh, for Anthony Paovalis to attend this evening mm -hmm. and be recognized. Always a good thing. All right. Uh, the next committee is the financial advisory, which we know uh, something's going to be going out at the end of August, correct? Okay. Uh, board policies and guidelines. Okay. Um, legislative. Uh, there are uh, a number of proposed bills regarding school opening and mask wearing, et cetera, yes. <laughs> which uh, we are going to touch on under old business when we get to. So just keep your ears to the ground on all that fun stuff that's happening down there in Columbus and uh, nationwide, I guess, too. Uh, TCTC, there was no report from Mr. Faulkner.
so we'll move on to number nine, old business. Mm -hmm. And I would open the floor for a discussion. Mr. Shiloh? Yeah, as, a, as, as I put in my notes in preparation for the conversation, COVID-19 protocols, masking, et cetera. So my conversations with John May, um, which as I say, happen often, um, you know, along the way, we have great open lines communication. Our, our plan that I can say that is known is that we are going to continue to have a plan for this year. We don't know the specifics of that plan because the Ohio Department of Health has not responded. You have the CDC commenting in one direction. You have the American Association of Pediatrics responding in another. You have the governor contradicting the CDC um, through an executive order law, whichever, because I'll can comment further on that. So until <laughs> until the rules, the guidance uh, are put forth, um, it's very challenging to say exactly what will or will not take place mm -hmm. in the future. Again, everyone needs to be flexible and we need to be responsive and we need to keep in mind what we think is the best health and safety and wellness um, situation possible mm -hmm. for our students mm -hmm. and our staff here in the Warren City Schools. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I can say that we have already planned as part of our Trumbull County Administrators Conference, we added in Frank Migliozzi from the Trumbull County Health Department um, for when Trumbull County Administrators are meeting the first week in August. I reached out and, and asked that John may be invited to that meeting as mm -hmm. well, um, just so we have the continuous alignment between the yeah. City of Warren, and they do work well together, but mm -hmm. again, we're the only school district in the City of Warren, the other 19 go, you know, with Migliozzi, so we, we, we have to be combined in, in, in the right efforts for all of Trumbull County. Yes. Um, so, so I've made those efforts as well. So I just want everyone to, to, to know that these efforts are continuous, they're ongoing. Um, we are going to promote distancing in the schools. We are going to promote sanitization. In fact, from a maintenance mm -hmm. standpoint, last year we added a day sanitizing position mm -hmm. um, to, to wipe down high uh, touch points. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to continue to do that. If it doesn't uh, assist us in COVID, it surely will in colds or flu mm -hmm. or other things. Mm -hmm. So sure. we're gonna continue to do practices that we find are best practice. Um, mm -hmm. And again, there are no standing health orders that exist as of right now. So we are going to have reasonable um, direction for our students and for our staff um, and our guests in the schools. And um, we'll probably get more specific with those um, as we get more information and we're hoping again like mr. May shared with us shared with me on Monday they're forthcoming hopefully sooner rather than later so any questions anybody mm -hmm. we're on it okay can do about it right now <clears throat> all right so no one has any questions we're Good to wait and yeah. mm -hmm. take the guidance of the county and mm -hmm. the city whenever we find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Gazelle, do you have anything that you want to share with us from a legal perspective? with 
line whenever anybody has questions about any of this. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's good that your local health official is willing to meet and have the discussions that the, the, the Trump County Health Department is going to be meeting with the schools, um, and we'll see what comes from that. Uh, my last caution to you is we were in a better place this time last year than we are this year as far as certainty on what the start of the school year is. Yes, I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. agree. Let's be honest. Uh, we absolutely. We were in a much better position last year. Yeah. So this year, um, we're dealing with a variant. The pandemic mm -hmm. is not over. The numbers are um, going. No, the numbers are going up. Going yep. That's yeah. going up. Yeah. So the, uh, the position that the district is taking is that you're going to take every health precaution that you can mm -hmm. is, is going to be your best course of action. Mm -hmm. And we'll just wait and see what other directions we get. Um, our firm is in contact with folks from the state to see, um, and actually folks in the legislature to see how soon we can get information. And we will do like we've been doing, send something out um, okay. as quickly as possible. The bulletin that you did receive was actually put together by every attorney in the firm. We were stuck on a phone call for hours. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. So we will continue to, to get that information to you as quickly as possible. I know you have other sources that you receive that information from, so utilize those other sources as well. If there seems to be any conflict, do you have any questions? You know where to find me. Thank Giselle, you. Giselle, yes. uh, I would just like to say, number one, thank you, but as this is live streamed, this is Gazelle Spencer, our lead attorney from our firm of Venice Britain. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. All right, anything under new business? Okay, and, um, Mr. Shiro, I do have a question before I proceed. So I have this agenda that was laying up here. Is this an updated one? No, there's been no changes to the agenda. Uh, based so upon the one what in is, the book so go is from good. The I just one wanted to book. make sure before I proceed. The, the ones that we had uh, printed for our open meeting, yes. since we have not had open meetings, um, apparently the maintenance staff distributed them. Um, you oh, know. Okay. 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 So, okay. so there is no, no change to Sorry. the agenda okay. from the draft okay. agenda. The draft agenda so is the final. Okay, so we're good in the book. All right, That's thank you very much. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So with that, uh, we are on page three. Uh, item one, Mr. Fowley, please. Treasurer's recommendation. Minutes. It is recommended the resolution listed below regarding the June 2021 and July 2021 board minutes be approved as submitted. Second. Okay, call the roll, please. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Lamparez? Yes. The motion carries. On page four, item two, Mrs. Shannon, please. Monthly financial statement. It is recommended the resolution listed below regarding the June 2021 financial statement and short-term investments made by the treasurer during June 2021. Exhibit A, page 37 to 38, be approved as submitted. A second. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Lamparos? Yes. Motion carries. On page six, item three, Mrs. Patterson, please. 2021-22 co-curricular budget and purpose statements. It is recommended the resolution listed below establishing 2021-2022 co-curricular budget and purpose statements be approved as submitted. Second. Okay, call the roll, please. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Lamparos? Yes, the motion carries. On page seven, <laughs> item four, Mr. Fowley, please. Appropriation budgets. It is recommended the resolution listed below to approve appropriation budgets A, be approved as submitted. Second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mrs. Lamparos? Yes, and the motion carries. On page eight, item five, Mrs. Shannon, please. Transfer of funds. It is recommended the resolution listed below for the transfer of funds be approved as submitted. Second. Okay, call the roll, please. 
Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Lamparis? Yes. Motion carries. On page nine, item one, Mrs. Patterson. Please. The superintendent's recommendations, agreements, contracts, and or leases. It is recommended the resolution listed below. Entering into agreements, contracts, and or leases A through D be approved as submitted. Second. Thank you. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Lamparos? Yes. And the motion carries. On page 11, item 2, Mr. Walker, please. Recognition of quotes for PK through 8, photographs for the 2021 22 school year. Mm -hmm. It is recommended the resolution listed below, uh, recognizing the quote for the PK through 8 photographs for the 2021 22 school year be approved as submitted. Second. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Lamparos? Yes. And the motion carries. On page 12, item 3, Mr. Fowley, please. Awarding the contract for pre-K through 8 photographs for the 2021 and 2022 school year. It is recommended the resolution listed below awarding the contract for the PK through 8 photographs for the 2021 through 2022 school year be approved as submitted. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mrs. Second. Patterson? Yes. Mrs. Lamparos? Yes, and the motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I'm a Z. <laughs> a Z, she's special. Um, uh, page 13, item 4, Mrs. Shannon, please. Payment in lieu of providing trans transportation for non-public stu school students. It is recommended the resolution listed below approving payment in lieu of providing transportation for non-public student, school students, transportation to and from school mm -hmm. for the 2020, should that be 21, 22? Or is that yeah, correct? Shouldn't it be, a, is that? It depends on the year for which the application was made. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. 2020 to 2021 school year be approved mm -hmm. as submitted. Second. Okay, call the roll, please. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mrs. Lamparos? Yes. And the motion carries. Okay, on page 14, item 5, Mrs. Patterson, please. Acceptance of gifts. <laughs> it is recommended the resolution listed below regarding acceptance of gifts be approved as submitted. Our benefactor is the Agates. Garden Center, mm -hmm. and it is for the Kindergarten Summer Bridge, 150 flower pots, estimated value of $500. Thank you to our benefactor. Second. Second. Call the roll. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Lamparis? Yes, and the motion carries. On page 15, item um, 6, Mr. Walker, please. Mm -hmm. Tuition reimbursement is recommended. The resolution listed below for tuition reimbursement be approved as submitted. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Lamparos? Yes, and the motion carries. On page 16, item 7, Mr. Fowley, please. Personnel recommendations. It is recommended the resolution listed below regarding personal items A through N be approved as submitted. Second. Okay, and that will take you. Yeah, a long way. It's a long one. Yeah. To page 34. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we do have two retirements mm -hmm. under classified on page 24. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you to those employees for their years of service. And call the roll, please. Pad. Mr. And I Valley. I noticed that we've hired four brand new teachers, bachelors, and starting their careers here. And we're very glad to have them. Go ahead. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mrs. Patterson? Abstain. And Mrs. Lamperos? And I'm abstaining as well. The motion does carry. Okay. And we move to agenda item number 11, public participation via email. We did not receive anything. Um, we do not have any need for executive session at this time, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Mrs. Patterson? Yes. Mrs. Shannon? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Fowley? Yes. Mrs. Lamperos? Yes. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you for joining us, and uh, enjoy the rest of your week.